Hello. Hi, everyone. Do we have anybody tuning in yet? Uh, it's House Improvements here. We're going to do a live stream this evening. And I posted up on our Facebook and Patreon and uh, Twitter as well, just to let you guys know that we'd be around. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody tuning in quite yet, but uh, hopefully hopefully everybody comes along. So so we're, uh, we're kind of continuing on uh, trying out this... Uh, this live stream thing. Uh, we're obviously kind of on our second official live stream. Oh, we got some people coming in now. We got uh, Rugged Rebel 57. Hi, Rugged. How's it going? Uh, SG. Hi, Jamie. Uh, Shannon? Shane's? Good to see you guys coming in and checking out the live feed. So and we got John. We got uh, Bardo. Bardo. Uh, I can't. Can you, what's he saying here? Can you do a video on converting a regular window with a frame to glass block? Uh, it's probably not something we're gonna do anytime real soon. Uh, basically, I think what you're saying is you wanna take an existing window out and fill that opening with glass block, I think is what you wanna do. That's something we could probably uh, talk you through even on the forum if you wanna come and check that out. Um, post up your question there and we can go through it there. So we're getting lots of people uh, tuning in here now. We got uh, MP Marvin 999. Hello, how's it going? Oh, and there's uh, Bardu. I don't know how you want me to say that, Bardu. Uh, yeah, I got it. You say hi. This guy, yeah. Uh, we got Sean, Gusto, Betty. Hey, Eddie. Uh, Jamie, I think you were on there earlier. Yeah, you were up right near the top. Do more wood video. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. You might have to expand on that a little bit. Uh, Bard of today. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. That's perfect. Uh, can we... <laughs> I don't know if I'm really going to get into the coronavirus uh, prepping. Uh, that's not really my thing, but obviously the way things are... Turning out, we all have to be careful if we're, especially if we're traveling. So, uh, thank goodness to my area so far, it's not been an issue. But I know some of you could be in areas where it is. Take whatever precautions you need to. Uh, who else is in here? We got uh, R. Sanchez. Hi, Ken Park. Uh, N. S. Uh, what did you say now, Rug? Can you give me a big? Big old Canadian A for us Americans to enjoy. All right, A. Thanks for tuning in, A. <laughs> Was that good enough? Do us Canadians actually say that very much? I guess we're known for that, so we must. We just don't notice it. So uh, We got uh, Richie here with a question. Any ideas for covering up foundation block when con converting a part of your garage into a home office? Foundation block. So... Uh, I assume you just want to make it look a little nicer, uh, maybe even add some insulation. So you could you could frame out around that block if the block is uh, probably protruding further into the uh, room than the rest of the wall that's sitting on top of it. You can frame around it, drywall, uh, kind of almost like a small section of basement wall just to hide it and put a little ledge there or whatever you need to do. So uh, use your imagination. Or you're not going to break any rules by covering that up. So. Uh, can you make a video on how to replace stair treads? That's from Benjamin Campbell. How to, how to replace stair treads. So uh, do you have some broken ones possibly or something? Um, it, it's not super easy depending on how the stairs are built. So it, it kind of depends on the situation. Sometimes they're routed into the stair stringers on the side. So uh, in that case, you're obviously not going to be able to get a new one in completely that way. You'll be able to get the old one out, but you'll just have to cut it short enough that it fits between the stair stringers and reattach it. It might be something we can look at, but it probably won't happen right away either, Benjamin. Um, we got Jason uh, Shirelli. Shirelli. I remodeled our guest bathroom, and when I couldn't figure something out, I watched your videos. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Jason. That's why we make the videos. We... We also have the forum, so anybody that isn't aware yet that we, we have a forum, if you get stuck on something or you know something that we haven't answered for you in a video or whatever, 
sign up to the forum. It's totally free. Post your question up there. Uh, my, myself, I'm on there quite a bit every day. And we've got a half dozen other very experienced, experienced people that can help you out there as well. So, uh, Jacob May, love your channel. Thank you for all the tips and tricks. You're welcome, Jacob. I'm glad to uh, be able to help and uh, keep everybody moving along with their projects. So, uh, thanks for all your videos. Very helpful stuff. Looking to move into a house this year and implement as much of your stuff as I can. Thank you, Barb. Well, that's good. Like I said, uh, that, that's why we do this. Uh, we want people to be able to learn uh, for one thing, but also save some money and, and do a lot of these things themselves. So, uh, Nazar, hey bud, greetings from Montreal. Hey, another Canadian, eh? How's it going? Just wanted to drop a line to say thanks for your bids. Really helped me remodel my house a few years back. Hey, you're welcome. No problem. Sean in Alaska. I think you're at the. I think you came on last time there, Sean. Uh, heck, ooh, I lost you. I gotta scroll back. Uh, heck, I did not even know you were coming on. Well, Sean and anybody else, uh, the easiest way to know when we're going to come on is to uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once you hit the subscribe button that you'll usually find down you know, down here on the corner, a little bell icon will come up. And if you click that, that'll uh, allow you to receive notifications from our channel. So anytime we post something new or come, come on uh, live like this, you'll get a notification uh, to your phone or your desktop or whatever. If you also follow us on Facebook or Twitter, or uh, if you're a patron of ours on, through Patreon, uh, we also put up notifications uh, a little bit of time ahead too on those. So, uh, Aaron Pierce, uh, we love the channel. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, Richie Trice, you got it. Uh, oh, I answered a question there earlier, I think, to Richie. Uh, who else we have on here? I'm just kind of scrolling down. Everybody, I got to move in a little closer. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. <laughs> um, Anis uh, Hafez, Hafez, can you share the basic plumbing codes? I have to cut a main sewer line in the basement to hook up the kitchen drain. Uh, a lot of them, well, a lot of codes in general are a little different obviously, depending where you are. I mean, even even a neighboring city or county or province or whatever might have different codes than, than what you have to follow. So uh, you're better off to honestly call your local uh, cord, uh, code enforcement and just uh, run by what you want to do with them. I know a lot of people are scared to do that because then the government gets involved, right? They know what you're doing, but uh, it's better to check with them or check even call a local plumber. Have them come in and do an estimate for what you want to do and usually by talking with them you're going to get a few hints on what they uh what they would have done and maybe you'll find you can do it yourself so so it's kind of hard for me to sh share codes because i obviously don't know where you are right now and i don't know what your codes are likely so um <laughs> i have a canadian friend who sounds just like you and says a at the end of every sentence well I think maybe some of us do a, but I don't generally, at least I don't think I do. Maybe I do. I'll see when I watch this, see how many times I say a. Somebody keep track of that. Uh, okay, who else we got? Uh, we got Jers, Jersey, I don't know. Nate from New Jersey is who we are anyways. Checking in, Shannon. You make excellent videos. No problem, Nate. Um... We got Jason May again. Hey, Shannon. Got all that. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see everybody's tuning in. I'm really glad. Uh, we got about 80 some odd people in here. Uh, there's another thing I just noticed up on the top corner. You can click the thumbs up icon. Uh, that always helps us on any of our videos, including this one. So if you are enjoying watching me talk, <laughs> click the thumbs up. So I think my scrolling has maybe stopped here. There we go. I think we're good now. Uh, so I've, I've, I know I'm missing some people, but uh, it's, it's hard to keep track. I mean, I've got a whole screen here that shows 20 or whatever at a time. So uh, Bob Kemp, redoing a large garage roof, removing shingles and going with steel. The question is, should I use ice and water on the whole roof? Um, not really necessary. I, I'm assuming you still have 
the sheathing on the roof, the plywood or the West B or whatever was on there. Uh, generally under tin it, on a garage, it really wouldn't be needed. Um, it is definitely a, not a bad idea though. Um, the nice thing with ice and water shield is uh, as a membrane, it kind of self heals. So every screw that you put through that metal and into the, the plywood on the roof and through that membrane, it kind of self heals around there. So not that those screws usually leak, but over time they may. So it's up to you. Look at what the cost is and see if it's worth it to you. It's not absolutely necessary though. Uh, we got uh, Cam Barnett says hi from South Dakota, USA. Uh, oh, he hit the bell, so he's he's signed up for the notification, so that's perfect. Uh, anybody that does that will get notified then anytime we come on live or post something. We got uh, Rob Torres from Glendale, Arizona. Hi, Rob. Brandon Schultz, hey brother from from Texas. I have some questions about rafters. Okay, Brandon. Well, I'll try to keep watching for your name here as we go and see what your questions are. We got, uh, oh yeah, Sean in Alaska. Yep, I was here for the last one too. I was out shoveling snow and, and uh, firing up the Weber grill. It must be supper time in Alaska right now. So uh, hopefully you can uh, still catch some of the show and not burn your steaks up there. Eric F. Greetings, Shannon from Huntington Beach, California. Actually, I've been to Huntington Beach. Uh, it was a few years ago. Love the channel. Uh, Eric says, love the channel. Great content. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, I actually walked up and down Huntington uh, a few years back in October. I think we were the only ones that actually put our feet in the water. Uh, everybody else that happened to be wandering around on the boardwalk there probably knew we were Canadians if we were actually in the water that time of year. Uh, that's Kim. Oh, there's Kim uh, Barnett. Been a fan for years and years. Well, perfect. We've been around actually for quite a few years now. It's it's a little bit mind blowing, honestly, but uh, it's glad to see a long time uh, follower checking in here with us. Uh, Karen Register, just want to say thanks from uh, NC, uh, what is it? North Carolina. Sorry, <laughs> your videos are fantastic and help have helped a lot. So perfect. I'm glad they they can help you. Uh, Chris Garcia, my buddy, FYI, you were the first person I YouTubed on how to do projects. Perfect. I hope everybody does that. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, there's there's lots of good YouTubers out there and I, I hope that I'm kind of one of those ones in that upper level that people can turn to when they have an issue. So, uh, Kim Barnett, she, she, I'm a she. I'm sorry, Kim. I'm sorry. So Kim is a she. I, I obviously said he earlier, so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, my buddy, uh, I already got that one. Uh, Kitty Fruit Loop Freeze. Kitty Fruit Loop Freeze. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, oh, come on. TJ Bloor, Saskatchewan Rough Riders suck? Come on now. You must be from Alberta. <laughs> Okay, farm gal, on-demand hot water heater, better than a standard hot water heater? Uh, there's a lot of attributes to them that are that can be better. It kind of depends, depends what you want. Um, usually an on-demand will definitely use less energy. And if you don't have a real sprawling house, um, it will uh, it'll definitely keep up to, uh, to uh, where, you know, your usage. If you have a real sprawling house, you might want to have a couple different ones. No, they're, they're good. I, I don't have one myself, but they definitely will uh, do the job for sure. We've got a super chat here from uh, Chaka Gillis. Hello, Shannon. Hope all is well. Ryobi is trash. Were you on here last time, Chaka? I think somebody else called out Ryobi uh, last time we were on here. Uh, as most of you know, I'm pretty diehard with uh, Milwaukee, uh, although I'm still waiting for them to reach out and sign me up. Come on, Milwaukee. Send us some free stuff. Um, TJ Bloor, I'm from Winnipeg, not Alberta. Well, that makes a lot more sense. That's why you're bashing the riders. Well, we'll see what happens this, this year, uh, TJ. It's all in good fun. Yes, I know. Now I see where you put Grey Cup champions. Yes, I, I understand that. <laughs> uh, Troy uh, Waska Case, are you from Saskatchewan? I'm in Saskatoon. Love the channel. 
I am definitely from Saskatchewan, and I actually used to live in Saskatoon for a few years, my wife and I, but uh, we do not any longer. But uh, hello to you in Saskatoon. Uh, where else are we going? Uh, M. Tash Sander Simon. Inline water softeners. Do they work well? Uh, well, I, I'm assuming you're talking about any kind of water softener. Uh, I don't know if inline means something specific, but uh, I, I personally don't have a water softener in my house. Our, our water is pretty good right here, but there's still lots of people in our area that do have them. Uh, I don't know a lot about water softeners, so I'm afraid I can't really help you too much on that. But uh, I, I don't know specifically if you're talking about something different than what I am, but I'm talking like the big uh, bucket you got downstairs or wherever you have it into your water line, you throw salt in there. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Um, so Chris Garcia, sorry bud, gotta go. Wife says I need to help with the laundry. Hey, every good man knows how to do laundry. That's good. You go help your wife out, no problem. Uh, Rugged Rebel 57, is this going to be saved to your channel in the playlist to watch later and how long will you be on here tonight? I plan on being around probably for about an hour tonight. And unfortunately with your question, that means you're gonna leave us. But yes, this will be posted up on our uh, YouTube channel so that you can watch it. Uh, we haven't quite decided how long they're gonna stay up there, but uh, they, they aren't gonna stay up forever and ever, but it will be up there. So you can check it out tomorrow if you want. Uh, Armand Hammer, upfront dollars versus long-term savings on a tankless water heater. Well, that would really depend on your whole situation. There's quite a few different price variations. Uh, as far as how long it takes to get your money back out of the extra cost of a uh, tankless heater, I couldn't say for sure just because that's not exactly my area of expertise. Uh, I would talk to your local dealer. They're going to be able to have some information on that. They're probably going to sell both. So they're going to kind of know the comparison. So uh, I, I, I can't say for sure. So I don't want to any false information out there if I can help it. Uh, Richie Trice, Ryobi, Milwaukee, both made by TTI. I'm not sure what TTI, who they are. Ryobi tools are great for weekend warriors. There, there's a lot of companies that make more than one brand or more than one line of tool. A lot of times they have like their starter, basic, basic home line tool, we'll kind of call it. And uh, then they're going to usually have another higher up one like uh, I know DeWalt and uh, I think Porter Cable. Uh, I think some of them are all made by the same company. But anyways, yes, you're correct. Those probably are made by the same company. Uh, Vine Nigan, what do you recommend to use for two by 12 tiles on the bathroom walls for tiling? Uh, really? any two by 12 tile work. I'm not sure exactly what you're wanting to know, whether it's porcelain or ceramic or whatever. Uh, if you're using it in the shower, just uh, I would kind of lean towards a porcelain covered tile just because it's a little more waterproof. But uh, if that's what you're kind of getting at, then maybe look more at a porcelain finish. So uh, we got C222233 or whatever. I might have missed a two in there. I have an un condition closed in front porch. I'm going to insulate the walls. Can I use foam board and fiberglass insulation? Yeah, yeah, I should be all right. I don't honestly know that I'd go to the foam, foam board if you're not going to be heating it or anything anyways. Uh, if you use the fiberglass insulation and the vapor barrier, if those are used in your area, it's probably really all you need. Um, if you want to add foam on the outside, before you redid some siding or something, that'd be all right too. But if it's if it's going to be unheated, chances are the foam board might not be worth it for you. DS99. DS is a long time follower. I recognize that handle right there. So hi DS. Um, what's he say? Thank you for your many helpful videos from Ottawa. I, I don't think I ever knew where you're from DS, but I definitely recognize your the DS99, so thank you. I'm, I'm glad to see you're Canadian. That's great. Uh, Aaron uh, Pittinger, hello from North Dakota. 
Hi, North Dakota. I hope your winter's been going good. Ours has actually been pretty mild here. Our, our February was unbelievable. We might have hit some records. We've been above zero Celsius for most of February. So hopefully North Dakota has been too. Uh, where are we going to go to? Eddie Rodriguez. Hello from Chicago, Illinois. Hi, Chicago. Hi, Eddie. DS99, I have a tankless water heater. My gas bill went down quite a bit, but I hope it lasts for 20 years as I blew $4,000 on it. Okay, so you're you're helping me answer that question, DS. So that's great. So obviously your your cost that you had to put out for the heater was pretty high. So um, depending on your cost of your utilities to run it, it's going to take a few years to pay for it. Uh, Dovetails. Hi, Shannon from the UK. Hi, Dovetails. What area of the UK are you from? Um, am I missing anybody with any super important questions as we go? Arlene Taylor, what sealer type do you use on vinyl flooring? Uh, so you must be talking on a vinyl flooring joint. Um, I'll be real honest, vinyl flooring, if it requires a joint, I usually won't do it. Um, I know there's sealers out there, I couldn't give you a name brand or anything like that, unfortunately. I, I'd i be totally guessing. I, I don't know. I know there's sealers. But if one's better than the other, I don't know. 876 Borgad, what's your thoughts on LVP in bathroom of rental prop property? Or should I just do tile? You know, honestly, I would use the LVP. Uh, it's quick to put in. Um, if it gets damaged, rip it out, throw some more stuff in there when your next tenant moves in. Tile, if it gets banged up or whatever, it's a big job to tear that out, replace it. And uh, generally, tile is going to cost you a little more money to put it in. So I say LVP all the way. Uh, Kevin Quinn, hello from, that must be Quebec. Ber my French isn't very good. Berchers? For cherries? Sorry, Kevin, I'm, I'm not sure where you're from. I, I'm assuming that's Quebec, but I, I could be totally wrong. Um, oh, we got Ken Park with a super chat. Hi, Ken. Appreciate the super chat. How are you doing out there? Not sure where you're from. Let us know. Uh, Hazmat84. I have a split level house in Michigan, a bathroom on the half. Whoops, it's moving here. A bathroom on the half upper level consistently has an issue with freezing supply lines as well as the drain both specifically in the shower uh, insulation uh, required split level and you're in the upper half um, if it's possibly near an outside wall or something maybe you've got a bad draft or something uh, blowing right on some of your plumbing or whatever if it's been freezing you obviously have got some access to it to thaw it out or something and if you don't, you, you may just have to cut a hole uh, in the low level below, um, depending where it's freezing, if you know that. But I'm, I'm guessing you have a break in your insulation, maybe in your rim joist, if it's like near an outside wall and you're getting a cold draft and it's uh, freezing things up on you. Uh, Justin Miller, do you have any videos on storm door install? We absolutely do. Yep. So uh, if you go, uh, when we're done here, if you go to the channel, or once this ends, you'll be on the channel anyways, but... Uh, just uh, go up in the little search bar and search how to install a storm door. I know we definitely have one there. It's a couple years old. Um, Portia, Portia GTS. Hi from Texas. Do you have any videos on making a covered, covered outdoor porch? Single story home. Uh, we don't have any videos on that. That, that is something I'd like to do is, uh, um, you know, some pergolas or outs, outdoor covered, uh, you know, patios or that sort of thing. But at this time, we don't have anything, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Um, Jeff Hermanson, this is going back to the uh, tankless water heaters. He says, DS99, you're going to have to pay for more regular maintenance with an on-demand water heater than your traditional water heater. That's that's quite possible. Yeah, you've got a, a few more things going on there. It's, it's uh, lighting and and heating more often so you're going to have maybe some igniter issues and that sort of thing that's probably controlled by a computer so going to be something in there that needs replacing at some point 
Shaggy's Glass. What's a good place for people who don't know much about home improvement to start? Any books or different sites that you would recommend other than your videos, obviously? I enjoy all your work. Well, you covered what I was going to say. First off, was our channel is the best place to start as far as I'm concerned. I might be a little biased there, but uh, good place to start. Uh, well, <laughs> this was 15 years ago. I'd say go to the library and find a good book. But honestly, this is the age of the Internet. Just search whatever you're looking for. You're going to find lots of information. Um, there's lots of bad information out there, too, uh, in saying that. But uh, there's lots of good channels that you can follow just like ours. Um, it's a really good place to, to gain knowledge on everything. And sometimes just getting in there and doing it is, is kind of a school of hard knocks sometimes, but uh, just get in there and do it and figure it out. So, um, Kevin Quinn, okay, that's got to be the place I couldn't uh, pronounce. So he's south of Montreal. Okay, perfect. Thanks for letting us know, Kevin. UFO BMX off topic, but anyone ever tell you Lost you there. I gotta scroll back. Uh, anyone ever tell you that you look like Dale Ear Earnhardt? Keep up the good work. That's one I never been told. I've been told lots about uh, uh, Dave Turn from Gold Rush, but <laughs> not Dale Earnhardt. I'll have to take a good look at his picture here and, and see. When we're done. Uh, MP Marvin nine nine nine. What do you recommend for resealing granite countertops? And is it a real thing or just a money grab snake oil thing uh, I don't have a lot of um, experience with granite countertops so I can't list off an exact sealer for you I honestly usually point my customers towards quartz um, just because there's a little less maintenance I feel and that sort of thing but there's definitely lots out there and no I don't I wouldn't say it's snake oil you definitely need to treat it the thing with sealing it is to keep it from absorbing other things that you spill on there, which can include, you know, some raw meat, juices from raw meat, that sort of thing, or wine or whatever. So you, you definitely want to seal it and keep your maintenance up on your granite. That was MP Marvin 999. I, I recognize that. Uh, I, I keep wanting to call it a handle. Your, your little name there. I remember that from uh, probably other videos or, or maybe you follow us on Facebook or something, but uh, Jason May, boy, we're getting lots of information on on-demand water heaters. Uh, he says, uh, service is 285 a season, but I love mine. So Jason obviously has one, and he's just pointing out the fact that it does cost a little more to keep it serviced up. So i got my technical help here trying to help me get through all the questions. So, uh, Aaron Toth, hey, I do spray foam for a living. I just have seen a video of you trimming trimming over trimming over spray best way to cut it level to the studs is use a saw but you're you are good at your job thank you very much uh yeah i think uh, most times if i get a little bit of spray foam sticking out you know on the studs or whatever i just use my open blade stuck out dangerously long but uh yeah no definitely a saw would do it uh thanks for tuning in aaron uh jer's Jersinate, Jersinate, sorry, I'm not sure how to say that. Shannon, I want to set up a shed, but my black top is on a decline. Okay, is there a way to make it level? It's a slight decline. Well, I guess it depends what you're, what you're saying is slight. I mean, honestly, if it's a 12 foot shed and you've got a decline in your, in your black top of uh, an inch in that 12 feet, to me, it honestly isn't a huge deal. If you're putting the shed directly on the blacktop, like using the blacktop as the floor, uh, I can see it being more of an issue. If you're building a shed like I did in my series where you've got a uh, wooden floor, maybe it's on skids or whatever, and the shed's built on that, then you can simply uh, build it on the blacktop wherever you want and uh, shim it up with some... Uh, I would use something that won't rot. Like I wouldn't use plywood under your skids or your joists. I would use like some uh, PVC product or even wedges of uh, metal or recycle, um, what's a good, uh, like a recycled decking product. You know, maybe your neighbor or you or somebody did a deck and they've got some cutoffs from their composite deck. Just use that, something that won't rot. Uh, 
Minnelli Media Jr. Hey, Shannon, I have a question regarding a storage shed. Do I need a building permit for a shed measuring 14 by 15? Most likely you will. Um, a lot of areas require permits for sheds. Um, so yeah, and especially with that size, I, I'd almost guarantee you you're gonna need some kind of permit for that. So um, a lot of people think permits are a bad thing, but really they're, it's a lot of it is the municipality or city or whoever is looking out for everybody, looking out for your neighbors, looking out for you. So your neighbor doesn't build some monstrosity of a thing on their property right up against your fence or something that, uh, you know, is an eyesore or maybe it's not safe or whatever. So uh, don't be afraid to go to your building permit place and uh, check on permits. Steve Hardbanger, Hardbanger, Hard, Barringer, Banger. Have you had any success in resurfacing old bath, resurfacing old bathtubs? And if so, what brand do you re recommend, Stephen Ohio, uh, Ohio? Okay, Steve. So uh, bathtubs, I would honestly have a pro come in and do it. I, I that's not something I would do either. If you want something that's going to last and and uh, <laughs> look good, I wouldn't try it yourself. I would hire someone to come in and do it. So, uh, hi, DS. 99 thanks i appreciate your uh, super chat that's awesome i i know you've been following us for a long time because i see your comments on a, almost every one of our videos You're usually one of the first people to comment and i appreciate that a lot here's ds again shannon you're so good in so many areas but i always but i always wondered if you have a most favorite reno to work on well I like a variety. I, I really do. Uh, I kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I've done a lot of bathrooms and for a while I liked them. Uh, when you do seven, eight, nine, ten in a, in a year, something like that, I did a couple of years ago, it gets a little boring because sometimes uh, some of the ones I do are a little more generic, um, nothing super fancy. I don't always get real fancy ones, so they get a little boring after a while, but uh, I, I like a nice mix of stuff. I like framing, I like siding, uh, windows and doors. Yeah, I, I like a little bit of everything. I'm starting not to like flooring too much because my knees are getting bad and uh, getting up and down all the time is, is getting hard on, but uh, I, I like a good mix, let's put it that way. Uh, Ryan, can you, or how can I change my switched outlet for a lamp to ceiling fan? Do I tap onto the receptacle or at the switch? Thank you very much. How can I change my switched outlet for a lamp to a ceiling fan? So, so I assume you want you're meaning you want to uh, operate the fan on the ceiling with the switch that was controlling that switched uh, outlet. So, yeah, you. It depends where your power is coming from, honestly. Um, that's not an easy one to answer right off the start because there's there's a lot of variables. If it's an existing fan you've obviously got power for the fan already in that box on the ceiling. Uh, so you would have to run from that fan. Uh, I don't know if you could do it from that existing switch. You'd probably be better off just to add a second switch in there. Um, that's something we could definitely talk you through a little better on the uh, forum. So if you want to ask that question on the forum, we can definitely get back to it. Uh, Curtis um, Mazinski. Mizinski? Uh, any how to videos on building a large lean to on the side of a house or garage? Uh, no, we don't have anything specifically for a lean to building, but that would be another great topic we should cover if we ever get the chance to. Um, a lot of places, well, uh, let's just say here, uh, lean tos you used to be able to basically just kind of put a ledger board on a wall, whatever you're leaning off of, put your your roof joists on there and support them with a beam or a wall on the other side and you're good just attached right to the wall but in my area I know they've been if you get a permit they won't allow you to do that anymore they want the the roof joists of your of your uh, lean-to to actually tie into the roof rafters of your house so it's a lot more involved now in a lot of areas and uh, for my area it's because we have snow load right so Maybe if you're down south and you don't really have snow issues, uh, it may still be as easy as just adding it right on the side of the wall. Um, 
master of none. My house was originally wood siding. When they did uh, vinyl, they went over that, but first one inch of foam board. When I replace my windows and siding, do I need to order two by four windows or two by six because the added foam? So what you have to do is uh, you need to actually determine then how thick your wall is. What I, what I like to do is order my window with the appropriate jam depth on it, especially if they're vinyl windows. So if your wall's, you know, total of eight and a quarter inches, I don't know what how thick your, your, your uh, foam and stuff was, but let's just say it's eight and a quarter inches. That isn't a standard size, but I would order, custom order my windows with that jam on there. The other option is to order just a, a standard window with no jam, but uh, one with a drywall return or whatever on it, so you can make your own jam with drywall or MDF or whatever you want. So uh, DS99, just wanted folks to know that the sweater you're wearing is so soft, warm, and comfy. I bought a blue one, and I love it. Fully recommend it. Thanks. Thanks, DS. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty casual tonight. I just got the hoodie on, so. Uh, Frank Furter, does the McDonald's up there serve poutine? <laughs> Uh, actually, I believe it does. I'm not a huge poutine eater, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure McDonald's has poutine up here. We're in Canada, eh? Uh, MP Marvin 999, you recognize me from other bids and as MP Marvin on forums. Okay, that's where I knew I recognized that from earlier. I knew nothing just a couple of years ago. Well, I hope you know more now uh, from uh, following along with us, Marvin. I appreciate that. Uh, Lerat, being flooring 25 years, yeah, the knees and back, oh yeah, only gets worse. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's why, I, I, that's going back to my comment earlier where I'm, I'm trying not to do too much for flooring. Uh, yeah, you guys that do flooring for a living, I, I don't know how you guys survive because uh, I know I have a lot of trouble already and I do, don't do flooring every day like you guys. Uh, Bubba's property maintenance. How, how's it going, house man? How's it going, house man? A little pun there. Hi, Bubba. It's going fine. <clears throat> My voice is getting a little croaky from yabbering along here so much. Uh, Minilin, uh Median Junior. Are you picking the hardest names for me to say? <laughs> hey, Shannon, is it legal to install electrical outlet and lighting to a storage shed? Uh, well, in most places, yes, they'll have some kind of rules for it, obviously. Um, whether you have to bury your cable underground or whatever, but uh, yeah, I, I don't see why not. Um, it'd be no different than any other outbuilding. So yeah, there, you'll definitely have some codes to follow, but it should be uh, able to be done. Char B, that's another name that I recognize, huh, Char? Uh, you need those rolling knee pads. Yeah, might be not be a bad thing. I, you know, in all honesty, that's part of my problem is I never used knee pads a whole lot. So, uh, um, yeah, the story or the the underlying problem here is wear your safety equipment right from the start and you'll probably be a little better off. Uh, Curtis uh, Mazinski, thanks for the response on the lean to question, Shannon. My concern was the snow load and snow and rain seeping into the wall. Tumblr Ridge, B.C. Yeah, so out there, I'm quite sure that uh, they're going to require you to tie into the existing rafters, which generally involves either pulling off some sheets of the roofing so you can properly attach to them, or maybe you can get into the attic and work on it. But, uh, Hager vids. How many outlets should be used off a 15-amp fuse? Well, typically, uh, I th think in most areas, you're allowed to put 10 outlets on any one circuit. Um, some areas may have different rules, some areas may not, but 10 or 12 is usually kind of your limit. Unless you've got something really dedicated on there that's drawing a certain average and it's gonna be on there all the time, then you're limited back. You can you can run 80% of your, uh, so if you got a 15 amp, well, you're saying fuse in this case, but 15 amp breaker, you'll really only want to uh, run enough stuff through there that's using about 80 percent of that amperage on any breaker so and most times you're not going to have it all on at once anyways but um ryan uh, sorry shannon i worded my question wrong i only have a switched outlet in the living room now but i wanted to add a ceiling fan but still use the switch already in the wall thanks again okay so that simplifies what I, how i can answer this 
So you're going to add a fan. You don't you don't have anything already. So it's really going to depend if you've got power already at the switch, or if uh, it's just a switch leg coming from that that receptacle where you wouldn't have constant power at the switch. Um, so you either need to get constant power to that switch or constant power up to the new fan location and then a switch leg down to the down to the switch. So, so it's, it's definitely doable. There's a couple different ways you can do it though. Uh, Paul uh, Cordomanchi, I'm replacing a deck. Should I use nails for the joist hangers or are the Simpson strong tie screws okay? Uh, either one. Uh, either use the proper nails for the Simpson strong tie or the screws. I, I've used both. The screws are quite a bit more money, so that's why a lot of people cheap out and try to use a normal deck screw or whatever, which you shouldn't do. Um, but yeah, I've definitely used the screws. Um, I've got this handy Milwaukee uh, palm nailer that works awesome for the nails. It's battery operated. It's a little heavy and bulky, but um, basically what it did, does is you uh, throw the nail in there in the end and put it where you want to put it through the joist hanger and squeeze the button and it just hammers it in there. So when you're doing joist hanger nails, because there's a ton of them to put in, uh, that's really helpful. But uh, least least expensive, uh, but the screws are definitely up to code. So if you're using the Simpson Strong Tie uh, screws. Um, C, okay, this we've had this guy on here, or this person, C22223. Would you spray foam around a window trim or use fiberglass insulation? The space is five to six inches deep and two to three inches wide. Okay, so that's that's starting to get pretty wide for normal spray foam, like a low expansion spray foam. That's getting to be a pretty big space. Uh, the depth isn't really an issue because you can insert your straw in and out and, and fill that depth, but the width is getting to be a bit of an issue at two to three inches. Um, in my, what I would have done in that case, is uh, if it was a window I was changing out and I knew I was gonna have that much space, I probably would have lined the opening in foam to start with against the framing, against the rough opening, just to reduce it down a little bit, install the window and then use spray foam. Uh, in your case, I would probably go with fiberglass just because of the, the excess, excess size of it. And uh, the cost to do that in spray foam is high, plus it's pretty hard to fill that two or three inches uh, really well. So. I would probably use fiberglass in your case. Um, Armand Hammer, y'all asking Shannon permit questions. It depends where you live. I've plumbed in four different states. The rules change. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was getting to. And it doesn't matter if it's plumbing, electrical, or whatever. Um, yeah, the, the codes vary from city to city even. So it, it's really hard to answer specific code questions unless you're in my exact area, then I can probably help you out there. So thanks. Uh, who was that again? Armin Hammer. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying that for everyone. NJ Property Records LLC. Have you worked with zip zipper sheathing? Uh, is it worth the extra money when building a home? Uh, I don't know specifically what you're talking about. Um, I'm assuming it must be a sheathing with the like with the exterior barrier on it, like a house wrap where you just tape up the seams or whatever. I have not used that type of product yet, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's worth it or not. House wrap is pretty inexpensive, so I, I'm kind of a house wrap kind of person. So, uh, who else we have here? Uh, uh, DS99, I have to wear knee pads when doing flooring, but the elastic on the back irritates my legs. I put a face cloth in between them. Yeah, that, that, that is kind of an issue. My, my knee pads are leather with a leather strap and it does kind of bite in after a while, but yeah, you're right. I know they aren't comfortable, but the person should be wearing them. MP Marvin 99, flooring work is murder, spe spe specifically tile. I literally put blood, sweat, and close to tears when I did it a few months ago. Yeah, tile work can be hard, especially if you're doing a lot of square footage at once, but uh, it's, it's quite rewarding uh, tile work. I find is, is quite rewarding when you can finally be done and sit back and look at it and just enjoy it. Tyler Johnson. Thank you, Frank Furter. My problem is I'm having trouble finding jobs to begin with and I'm helping a contractor now and learning as much as I can, but having trouble getting jobs for myself on the side. Okay, I'm not sure what that was 
referring to, but you guys must have been having a little discussion there. Her Frank answered a question that I missed. So, um, Jeremy Lafornia, Lafornia, if someone is into house improvements to further their career, would you recommend joining union or small company? How did you pursue, pursue, pursue your career? Well, um, I went to trade school, uh, which gave me my first two years of the program that I took. Then I worked for a commercial contractor for about a year. And then my wife and I actually moved to Saskatoon, which some of you might have heard a little bit earlier. And when I was up there, I didn't find work in necessarily right in construction right away. So I worked a few different things. Um, I've, I've never worked a union construction uh, company, so I can't say for sure. Um, there's benefits to both. I, I, usually if you're in the, in, in the union, you're going to be on big, big jobs and you may just do one or two things, uh, all day, every day. I, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but that'd be my impression. I like to be a little more uh, rounded person. So I think a smaller contract, you're going to deal with a lot more different things as the year goes on or the weeks go on and you're going to be a little more rounded. I, that's my, my two cents anyways. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, Junior Medina, Medina. Hey Shannon, did you study to learn all the stuff you know, or you just learn on your own? Uh, well, I am a journeyman carpenter, so I, I obviously went to trade school for that. But uh, I learned so many things just by doing them and working with people that were good at what they did, and paying attention to the other trades around me. That's why I'm, you know, I know some stuff about electrical and plumbing and and all that kind of stuff because I I pay attention to the other trades around me when I was working for construction companies and I kind of see what they do, how they do it, why they do it. And that not only helps me know how to do those types of projects as well, but it also helps me as a carpenter to know what, what can I do to make their job a little simpler so we can kind of work together. So I, I, a lot of on the job <laughs> training more than anything, but I definitely did go to school as well. So, uh, Jeremy Lafornier, Lafornier, for basement moisture barrier, is it true that based insulation, if it's based, that is a moisture barrier? Um, no, I, and I'm not sure if you're mixing up moisture barrier with air and vapor barrier. Uh, moisture barrier in a basement is generally the barrier that's placed right against the concrete wall or the block wall uh, before the stud wall goes up. Um, air vapor barrier would be on the warm side of the of the insulation, so just under your drywall finish. Um, we don't use faced insulation here because it can't it it doesn't mean cold here for us as an air vapor barrier. So we don't. I see it because it used to be used in older homes. So I rip it out, throw it away, and put in what we do now. But um, you are saying moisture barrier, so I'm going to assume you're actually talking about moisture barrier. So you would have to actually put that in backwards. The seams don't lap much. I, I don't think it would work. I I don't think you could use that as a moisture barrier. Mad Dog H, I just want to say thank you for making my job ease, easier at times. Hey, no problem, Mad Dog. Uh, that's that's why we're here. We're trying to help everybody out. So uh, Kyle Brett, hey man, thanks for all the videos. I like the way you articulate through the details. It makes it very easy to follow what you're saying. Okay, well, I hope so because I do tend to Dabble on a lot, and I know that's one of my one of my uh, my issues. We do get quite a few comments because the start of my videos, I'm talking, talking, talking before I actually do anything. Um, but I, I'm trying to get you guys all the information that I can before I get into it. Uh, basically, trying to start at the beginning so you know what the process is. So, but I appreciate that you appreciate what we do here. Um, physics, physique king. Can you give us a list of the tools you use for, I'm assuming you're meaning finishing a basement. For us beginners that would, that want to renovate our home. So can you give a list of the tools used for finishing a basement? Well, I'll give you a really quick rundown. Uh, if you're finishing a basement right from scratch, you're gonna need framing tools. So you're gonna need, if you go with the basics, hammer and nails, you're gonna need a circular saw, um, those are kind of your basics you're going to need for framing. You're going to need an open knife, a tape measure, 
caulking gun. Um, I would get a cordless impact driver or a drill or both. Um, those are kind of the basics you're going to need. That would get you through a lot of what you got to do to finish a basement. So, and, and then when it, if you're doing your own drywalling, you're going to need some drywalling knives and that sort of thing. But uh, um, yeah, those are kind of the basic things you're going to need to start out. Um, uh, Lorette, uh, got to get a fifty to sixty dollar knee pad with the real wide strap. They're nice. Doesn't bother the back of your knee at all. Okay, well that's good to know. Um, I know I've had the leather fifty to sixty dollar knee pad with the real wide strap. They're nice. Doesn't bother the back of your knee at all. Okay, well that's good to know. Um, I know I've had the leather uh, puts less spreads that pressure out that uh, puts on there. Uh, Jeremy Lafournier, is house improvements your company or do you work for somebody? Well, house house improvements is the name of our online channel, I guess, basically, is, is what that is. I have my own construction, uh, small renovation company uh, as well, and it isn't house improvements, no. So house improvements is just this, this brand, this, uh, what we do online, so. Um, Jeff Hermanson, you'll learn more on the job than you will in school. You definitely will. And a lot, some people learn really well sitting at a desk and in a classroom situation. Um, the reason we started doing these videos is because I said that I learn better by watching someone do something, like actually showing you how to do it. And uh, it turns out almost 600,000 other people subscribe to our channel because they like that too. So. Um, so yeah, no, uh, I, I would have to agree with you, but there is something to be said about being in the classroom and getting the basics. And, uh, if you go to a trade school, you sit in the classroom, but you also get into the shop and you get to do some stuff in the shop as well. So, uh, J 10 HB, what's your fra favorite framing hammer? Mine is Deludge. I'm not sure that I've even heard of that one. Um, honestly, my favorite favorite framing hammer is my pass load nailer uh, my gas nailer you can't beat that uh, my hammer uh, is the uh, uh, east wing is kind of basically my hammer that I use all the time uh, I broke I've actually broke the end off so some of you that have been around for a while you might have seen that post on Facebook probably a couple of years ago I actually broke where the shaft hooks onto the head of the hammer it actually snapped off on the east wing but uh, that hammer i'd had for 15 years or 20 years or something but anyway i bought another east wing so i guess that's my favorite hammer um ds99 no way you you do not babble i really think the details you give us are insightful and i love them well i appreciate that ds so uh junior medina again uh, hey shannon for roof rafters on a storage shed measured 14 by 15 do I have to use two by fours or two by six for the roof rafters and side fascia board? Um, so you're going to be running uh, about a span of seven or seven and a half feet. So two by fours are going to be fine. It kind of depends on how you design your rafter. Um, if you're in a high snow load area, I can't remember if you're the person from BC or not. If you're in BC, I would probably go with two by six just to be sure you got enough beef there. But uh, and as far as the fascia board, I like two by six uh, because the problem is even if you're using a two by four, by the time you cut the, the you make your cut on the outside end where your fascia is, it's going to be more than three and a half inches wide and without doing some extra cutting and stuff. I just like the look of a two by six fascia. So I think it just looks a little beefier, looks, looks better. So I'd use two by six. Hammers Matt 84, thanks for your answer, Shannon. I also know that my heart wept for you when you broke your hammer last year. Uh, it's rough losing a tool that you've had so long. Keep up the good work on the channel. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that I, I was more in shock than anything when I broke the head off that hammer. I think in the same week, I actually broke a red bar, snapped the end right off it. I don't know, I must have been overly strong that week. I'm not sure what was going on. Uh, MP Marvin 999, Speed Square. Okay, uh, are you asking if we're gonna do that video? Uh, it's going to come up. It's going to come up this year. Uh, we actually had had one up. Some of you might have caught it for a few hours, and I 
kind of messed up a couple things on it, so we pulled it down. I think that was last year, and we just haven't got back to reshooting that video. So, um, but that is coming up. Um, it will get released sometime this year. Uh, five and Dimer Smith. When your house is a hundred years old, you can find some pretty bizarre ways people did things back in the day. Absolutely, I have. Uh, I've definitely come across some strange things. Um, can't think of anything really bizarre right off the top of my head, but yeah, you see all kinds of stuff. You're going to see everything from newspaper rammed in the wall as insulation to, uh, uh, I actually just did a bit of a reno in a basement here recently and they had, does everybody know what a bounce sheet is like for in your dryer? They had used bounce sheets everywhere to stuff every little gap where they had a little draft coming in. That's what they stuffed in there for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, framing wise and everything, you find all kinds of bizarre stuff. So rehab life, LOL. Favorite framing hammer is a pass load. Well, I, I was just being honest. Honestly, I'm lazy. I, I'm going to use a pass load or a auto, automatic weapon anytime I can. So and by weapon, I mean framing tool. Uh, mine is an Eastman, but yeah, yeah, no, you're just kind of agreeing with me. So, um, uh, Dr. Green Thumb XD, getting ready to do tiling in my bathroom for the first time ever. Any tip? Um, plan it out. Take, take the time ahead of time to plan out the size of your tile, how you're going to start them, you know, how the rows are going to end up, make sure Make sure everything's uh, going to work out the way you want it to. Um, I don't know if you're talking about shower walls or the floor or what it is, but just take your time with it. Don't rush through it. Um, don't think you're going to go in there and get it perfect the first time off, uh, especially if you're rushing. So just take your time. Watch our videos. We, got, we did that bathroom uh, there last year or whatever it was and released, released that whole bunch of videos on bathroom. There's a ton of tiling stuff on there. So check that all out if you haven't already. Um, Ace DIY, doing a basement reno myself, having trouble with uneven floors. Old floors were two and a half inch with two by four and OSB, but now I want to use dry core, but it's only one inch max plus flooring. Please help. Having trouble with uneven floors. So it sounds like your original floor was, uh, had sleepers of two and a half inches uh, with OSB on top of it is what I'm thinking you're saying. And now you've ripped it all out and you're finding out the floor underneath the concrete is really uneven. Um, you're, you're using dry core and they do come with a shimming system, but if you've got differences of more than half an inch or, or whatever, your those shims aren't going to work out really well for you. So you may have to, you may have to do some uh, self-leveling cement or something to, get the floor closer in uh, or when I say level I don't actually mean level you just need it to get flat you need it to get closer to flat so so we're getting we're getting close here to uh, to shutting down uh, we've got a few more minutes and unfortunately we've still got lots of questions coming in and uh, I know you guys all enjoy this so uh, and I do too it's kind of nice just sitting here and shooting the breeze with everybody for a little bit. So it's a, it's a lot different than the forum, um, but uh, a lot of these questions or any of these questions could be asked in the forum afterwards too, if, if you didn't get the answer you wanted, or maybe I didn't catch here or see here or whatever. So uh, MP Marvin 999, I think they used bounce sheets in those holes because they thought the scent would keep pests away. That's possible. I know uh, on the farm uh, guys, say to throw bounce sheets in their big trucks and stuff to keep mice out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, uh, Hager vids. Thanks, Shannon. Been watching since 2012. Worcester, Massachusetts. Well, you've been here with us for a long time too, Hager. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Siliu. I can say thank you live for your video on house siding years ago, which helped me do a little project. Thank you. Yeah, we did. That must be vinyl siding because that's the only siding we've, we've got on here so far. Um, we did that one quite a few years ago. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it helped you out. And we've, we've kind of done some updating and uh, 
other bits and pieces of different siding, vinyl siding products. So uh, yeah, we've got a pretty good supply of vinyl siding installation videos. Uh, Frank Furter, thanks for taking time out in your day. Uh, doing this, take care of yourself. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate that. Not a problem at all. Uh, junior Media, is it important to square up four walls to build a shed? To, to build a shed? And if your answer is yes, why is it important? Thanks, Shannon. God bless. Uh, square up your four walls. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like if, if you... I don't know if you watched my videos, but anytime I frame a wall, I'm going to lay it down on the ground. I'm going to frame the wall together, and then I'm going to sheet it. But before I sheet it, I always square it, measure it corner to corner diagonally, and get those diagonals measuring the same thing so that wall is square. Because if you don't, and you stand these walls up, then you try to get it all together, and, I mean, they could be an inch out of square. Just nothing's going to line up right, and then you're going to have trouble with your roof and everything else. So absolutely square your walls up. So. And even once you have them standing up, uh, it doesn't hurt on a small building, especially it's easier to do. You can measure diagonally across the corners of the building to kind of get the whole building sort of squared up before you start the roof. So use some braces to hold it there until you get things solid. Uh, Sweetie Pumpkin, 1978. We built our first chicken coop with your help. Awesome. We should do a chicken coop. We aren't allowed to have chickens in our city, but it would be a fun little build. Uh, Brian M. Shannon, do you, uh, Shannon, what province are you in? Ontario? Oh, you're in Ontario, but, uh, uh, fellow Canadian for sure. Sebastian Tello, previous owner built basement walls with regular two by four for bottom plates on concrete. Should I redo the walls? If you, if the only reason you were going to do that is because they put regular plates down and they didn't separate from the concrete, I don't think it's worth ripping your, your basement out and uh, changing that unless you're having issues. Um, I, I don't think it's worth it. I really don't. There is a way you could cut those out and put new stuff in there without damaging too much stuff. And we could maybe discuss that on the forum if you wanted to ask a question there. That If you were going to do it, that'd be the way I'd do it without wrecking a bunch of drywall and everything. But if it's not causing any real issues or you're not noticing a big mold or rot issue, I would just leave it alone. Uh, rehab life, where do you typically work? So, uh, I basically, I live in uh, Southern Saskatchewan. So this is my area of work right here in Canada. Uh, Kyle Brett, have a good evening, buddy. Thanks again for all the videos. It's a lot of work filming and editing, etc. Appreciate it. Cheers from Ottawa. Yeah, no, uh, Kyle, you're, you're hundred percent correct. And, uh, I've got a business partner who does all that technical stuff because let's face it, I can hardly turn this computer on the room and uh, edit a video. So, and he's killing himself laughing right now because he knows it's true. Uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely the uh, I'm definitely the carpenter end of this uh, whole channel, the trades end, and then he is the technical end. So, uh, yeah, but you are correct. It is a lot of work to keep everything going here. So, thank you. Uh, rehab life drywall lid first it's a cardinal sin to do walls first okay i'm not sure if you're referring to somebody else or what it was so so yeah t typically if you can you always want to drywall your ceiling and then do your walls next so i, I think that's all he's getting at he's obviously responding to somebody else's uh post earlier that i missed uh fit life handyman everything rob would you vent the roof peak and soffits on a detached garage. Absolutely, I would. Yeah, that's, you should be doing that. Um, the key to proper, proper attic insulation in any any building is uh, getting that airflow from soffit to peak. Whether you're using a ridge vent or if you're using turtle vents, you know, that are up close at the top of the peak. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here, guys uh, and gals. Um, it's, it's been another, again, I don't know, maybe we got to start doing this for two hours. I don't know. That hour went by pretty quick. Uh, and, uh, we, we talked to a lot of people tonight and I'm, I'm appreciative to everybody that, uh, came out. Uh, we're sitting here at 80 thumbs up. So that's awesome. And, uh, the, the scroll's still going here. So, um, it's, it's unfortunate I can't stay here all night, but, uh, 
I've got to get up for work in the morning just like the rest of you. So, so I think we're going to sign out for now. I appreciate you guys watching. And like I said before, uh, if you join us uh, with our social media um, pages, you'll get notified anytime we're going to do these live streams ahead of time. And uh, the other way, like I said, is to uh, subscribe to our channel and then click the uh, notification little bell symbol there that will be along the bottom. Uh, somebody mentioned this this hoodie. We've got the shirts, the hoodies, uh, some stickers, that sort of stuff. So on any of our videos, you probably notice now when you're watching, especially on a desktop, I'm not sure how it looks on your phone because I don't use my phone a lot for YouTube. But uh, just down below the description of the video and stuff, you're going to see a a bar going across the screen with our link to Teespring. So if you want to get any of this swag, you can uh, go on there and check it all out. So, so thanks everybody for watching. And I really do appreciate the fact that you guys tune in and ask the questions you do. Um, Marvin P. <laughs> MP Marvin says fastest hour on earth. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I was surprised myself when I noticed it was uh, getting past the hour already. So, okay. Thanks guys. I'm signing out.